we just really want to welcome everybody and thank you for being here and joining us this way and adapting. Uh, aren't we resilient people? So we, um, I was going to tell you that we're just have some introductions, some different speaking to happen tonight. And I will do about a 15 minute slideshow presentation of the history. And then we'll roll into some more um, thank yous of our sponsors, etc. And then we'll introduce Susan Wolgar, and then we'll go into the awards. So, and then we'll start from um, the base award, which was today's People's Choice, and we'll work up to the cover award, which will have a drum roll, and it'll be the last thing to be announced. So hang in there, because that's what we're all waiting for. And um, we're really excited, really excited to celebrate um, this way. So uh, yeah, and I'll just turn it back over to Kim. She's gonna introduce our committee and who we are and what we did. So this committee began meeting in May of 2018. I don't think I was involved quite yet. I came in a little bit later than that, thanks to Gwen truly twisting my arm. But uh, honestly, a fantastic experience. Um, the committee is made up of um, artists, farmers, writers, writers, historians, teachers, conservationists, and um, as Gwen uh, likes to refer to us, five mighty rural women. <laughs> Um, we started on a wing and a prayer for sure and um, and have really uh, I, I couldn't be prouder but to work with them um, with these four people so our four people which I think everybody uh, knows of course is Gwen Day, um, Dee Poison, Dee how do you say your last name after all this time? Sounds good. Okay great thanks. Poison, Poison. Poison. That's how I say it to other people. Yeah. Um, yeah. Lana, <laughs> thanks. Lana Yakumchuk and uh, Ruth Rodler. Um, and uh, we became a subcommittee of Legacy Land Trust, which I'll talk about a little bit more um, in, in, a, in a future point. So um, thank you to everybody, to, to the people I named. Um, you've been fantastic to work with. And I'm going to pass it back to Gwen, who's going to become our host. And um, she's going to show us. Gwen, can you talk to get you to the, there we go. There we go. I'll start with reading a little bit because we, um, I wrote a foreword for the book, which I won't read at all because you'll get to read that later when you get your book, but um, it just kind of describes it best to start kind of at the beginning and then I'll go into the slideshow. So uh, I took a six year break from actually being an artist and a business owner to be a county counselor. Who would do that? <laughs> and <laughs> I served on the county council for those two terms and during that time I traveled throughout all of um, the beautiful part of Alberta that we live in and I got to know uh, the county and it felt really like my my own backyard. I couldn't help but notice and enjoy so many beautiful barns in the different seasons um, and their different ages and the different uh, varieties and styles throughout the years and I hadn't imagined that when I finished my service as a counselor that I would paint a lot of barns and that initially I was going to think about maybe I'd make a calendar or something with all these beautiful barns. So um, I knew when the time seemed right, I would begin my project. However, I like all good ideas, this one's needed to grow and be nurtured for a little, for a little while. I had an opportunity to participate in what's called the Right Art Book, which the Didsbury Library did. And they matched up, it was a real fun project and they matched up writers with artists. And uh, after that was completed, a barn, the barn painting idea resurfaced in my head and I had this aha moment and I call it a God moment because it was like a inspiration. And what if my thought was, what if I invited other artists that I knew to help me paint the barns? And what if we did a book instead of a calendar? And the idea just kind of went with that. And well, what if I matched up barns with artists? And, um, instead of a calendar, what, like a book would be so much greater. So the book would not just feature my own paintings, but it would be those of all different artists, all different mediums and all different styles. And that really excited me. Um, in Mountain View County, we have so many artists and we're so blessed with that. So when my life seemed to, to be freed up enough, I carefully shared my fledgling idea and I put it out in actual words from my head to the words, you know how you do that. And 
I shared it with a couple dear friends and that was Dee Poison and Lana Yakumchuk and two people I trust. And you know, they said, let's do it. And they were gung ho from the start. And um, the idea was born and that was not putting it back in the jar anymore. It was alive <laughs> and it was gonna go forward. And uh, the time had come finally for it to blossom. So we formed a committee and we collectively began in the spring of 2018. We first approached the Carstairs Historic Society and asked if they would come along with us in this. And we picked up another valuable member and that was Ruth Rodler. Um, then we floated our idea to the County of Mountain View Council. I think we presented to them at least three times and everyone we shared it with really seemed enthusiastic about the idea. Um, that energized us and kept us going. It spurred us on and we met together monthly at the Carsters Museum and we formulated our plan. Now I'm gonna try and share screen so you can see the slideshow. This is one that I did for the county, but I've modified it a couple times and I modified it for tonight. So here we go. Share. And then, can you all see that? And I don't know how to get it to the, to the main screen. Oh, here we go. There we go. Okay. So we first started by creating a vision and a vision statement is always really important. I learned that, of course, when I was on county council. And uh, um, our vision is to art, was art, to artistically document rural culture through paintings and stories of barns in Mountain View County. And this is a, a wonderful painting by Teresa Scott, another Carstairs artist. I'll have to keep plugging for our Carstairs artist. And it's a Hildebrandt barn, which I think is also near Carstairs. And uh, yeah, this, I added in a few different paintings today. And then um, anyway, our mission was to preserve the imagery and stories of Barnes and Mountain View County, to preserve history and educate about rural life in Alberta, to engage artists and barn owners. And this barn we um, was captured by Jim Brown. It's a Davidson barn and it's out by Bergen. And we wanted to include every style of barn through time and history and Quonset barns became quite a thing in the 60s and 70s. And so this is one of our Quonset barns in the book. These were our goals and uh, to publish a high quality hardcover coffee table book, which will be measured 12 by nine and have 120 pages of full color published in the fall of 2020. Check mark <laughs> to promote history, art, rural culture, and tourism, to connect artists with rural culture, history, and each other, to engage the community in the understanding and appreciation of our rural culture and the arts in our region, to capture and preserve each barn's story, give any profits to the county museums and the Legacy Land Trust history, to host the barn art show and book launch November 20, 2020, which is our date, and it's being done in its own way. <laughs> and then to include 50 original barn paintings and stories, subsidiary pages with a few barns that are no longer with us. And this is a pencil drawing, one of the only paint pencil drawings in the book by Tanya Lefebvre, also Carstairs, and that's the Thompson barn. We ended up with 49 barns all within the county who all applied to be in the book. We chose a variety of types of barns. Barns from all areas of the county was important to us. We even did a driving tour and knocked on some doors to try and rustle up some more barns to barn owners to apply. And they were from all eras, as old as early 1900s to just recently built and a concert barn. There will be subsidiary pages by Helen Erickson. Um, the book will be ordered from the old, the book order will be from the oldest barn to the newest barn and the history write-ups. We had writers on our committee, Ruth and Lana, who interviewed barn owners and some barn owners actually wrote their own stories. Each barn will have a write-up across the page from the painting. 
there was 37 local artists juried into the to participate in the Paint the Barn Mountain View County. And this is, um, there was more than that that applied, but 37 were juried in by Susan. And this is uh, the Erickson Barn by artist Lila Weiss. The artists and barn owners were all matched via a random draw on the live Facebook feed in the spring of 2019. Artists were able to begin painting their assigned barns in the spring and they all had a full year to complete it. So they could choose whatever season they wanted to do their barn in. And some of them did them in several seasons, which was amazing. We hosted a meet and greet at the Cremona Heritage Barn for artists and barn owners. And, and that was a really fun event because they all, it's like a, I don't know what they call these matchup nights where people is like, I'm such and such a barn and, and oh, I'm your artist. And it was just a really great event. And the Heritage Barn hosted us free of charge, which was really wonderful. We showcased a few of the finished pieces of the Corona Heritage Barn Fall Festival and received great response from the public. And that's actually when we began to think, well, we should start doing a pre-sale of the book because people really want to know, well, how do I buy one? Um, we hosted two show and share events for the artists themselves to bring their work and get feedback and share the stories of their barn experiences. And that was a fantastic time too. We had worked with an old institute to create a short video, which they were going to do a full, they did a lot of videoing um, of different artists at work and they were going to do a full, um, a full video, full length one. And um, we were looking forward to that, but unfortunately their funding was cut. And so we have a short one to show you tonight, but the, the long one is, is still kind of in limbo, I guess. We worked with a publishing company called Friesen's Press out of Manitoba and have worked out the details of publishing, um, the costs and the deadlines, etc. Huge learning curve for all of us. None of us have done a book before. So that's been an amazing learning curve this year. And this is um, the Riddle Ranch Barn by Karen Peterson. And she did it three different times. And uh, this is one of her versions. The one in the book is our, her plein air study. And this is a studio piece. Not all barns are red, but they all have a story. So we have white barns, gray barns, red barns, and even a blue barn in the county. <laughs> And how do I get that to go down? Anyways, we, um, we had the art, all the artists bring their artwork on March 8th to Silver Willow when we used the cookhouse there and had them all set up. And I can tell you that was an incredible um, experience for me because I finally got to see everybody's work in place. And like I said, so, some of them did their barn several times and uh, it was just absolutely overwhelming. I, I can't even express how... Um, emotional, I was coming through, how emotional I was seeing, seeing everybody's dedication and the, the incredible work that came out of, of their hearts with this project was touching. Um, so the winners were chosen by our juror, uh, Susan Walgar and her assistant, and Susan will have to tell me her assistant's name is, sorry, I don't know that. And we had plans to attend local fairs, trade shows, community events to start to gather pre-sales and really um, find sponsors, but then COVID hit and that changed all those plans. We did get to a couple things, but um, most of it has been done on social media. Our committee writers, Lana and Ruth began to gather and write each barn story um, all spring and all throughout actually throughout the months of the summer. The final photography was done on April 6th and 7th. It was two full days with uh, local photographer Curtis Christensen and his assistant Amy um, from Spin Breath Productions from Crossfield. And uh, we did that in the cookhouse. The artists left their work for that whole month and, and then uh, we were able to capture everything during those two days. And then of course he had lots of post-production work, hours and hours. Um, and then the book re uh, design work started. Carly Marsh got us started with a book cover design and then um, workload was um, immense for her as she's a teacher and getting back into online schooling and all those things. So um, we moved it to the completed work was done by Laura Edinger, who is out of Airdrie. And uh, we had about three weeks of really heavy work to press through to the deadline. And the committee just, I, I don't remember the last two weeks of August, actually. The committee just put 
so much effort and so much time into the refining of, of the, um, of the books and the writing and the order and all those kind of details. I can't even actually start to describe how that all went, but we got through it. <laughs> That's what counts. And by the end of August, the book was sent to the printer as according to our deadline that we had preset and the plans began for the book launch and the art show. Keep losing my mouse. There it is. Um, this is the Byron barn. It's a school barn by artist Christina Crouch. And it's a unique barn in that it was used for housing the kids' horses and the horse and buggies when they went to school at the Byron School. And it still stands today and looks just like that. It's just uh, really nice. I'm sure he uses that as a garage or a shed, but it's kind of a cool barn. So we applied for $10,000 from the community grants funds from the county. Um, however, we received an interest-free loan instead, which we are very grateful for. We had uh, gone as completely on faith uh, into this project and had no funds whatsoever. So that was a huge, uh, gave us a huge ability to put our down payment towards our the publisher who, who needed that in June. The county assists us in free advertising several times. The county pre-purchased 100 books that they will use for long service awards or guest speakers. And this great, greatly aided us in our ability to pay for the um, early bird bills. Um, and then they, they received and stored uh, our, our books and then moved them to the legacy office for us actually today. So they're finally at the legacy office. And we like to say just a great big thank you to Mountain View County, to the staff and to the council for supporting us uh, in these ways. It's meant a lot to us as we progress through this. And then I'd like to say a big thank you to our loft, our barn loft owners, Lawrence Masonary, Heritage Barn, Mountain View County, Plains Midstream, anonymous sponsor, who I won't name, huh? And uh, several sporting club. And I thank you to um, the barn opener and barn raiser sponsors as well that gave um, so willingly and trustingly towards this project for us. I will, I will speak to each of those uh, in a little bit here as well when I give you your uh, virtual book. So there's 122 books will be given out free, one to each barn owner, artist, county school, library, and museum. We have pre-sold 460 books as of today, and that's $20,000, $20,700 worth of, of uh, books. And we are about 5,300 away from breaking even point. And then we ordered a thousand books. And so our rough estimate right now that we'll still raise about $14,000 for the benefactors, which are, um, like I said earlier, the museum and the legacy land trust. We raised $3,543 from sponsorship as well. People can still order their books and we'll keep putting that out there on our website that Kim so kindly built for us. This is um, the Seabert Marsh Barn by Oddish artist Shauna Olson. And uh, this picture, it is beautiful, but it really doesn't do it justice. You would have loved to seen this painting. Um, it's a four foot by four foot. It's huge and massive texture. It, is, it just feels like you're standing right in front of this barn. It's, it's quite impressive. So I, I had to mention that because, you know, these images are wonderful, but to see them, to see these paintings in person is, would be 10 times better. So anyway, we're still hoping that we can plan something in the future, but I just have to say that. And the next thing will be the awards. And I'm gonna hold off on that and figure out how to transition uh, back out of this. <laughs> Stop share. Okay, now I have to give Kim back the controls. Oh man, look how much we learned today, Kim. Uh, you're a good teacher, make host. Oh, change host. Okay, but I still have a couple things to share. <laughs> yes, you can keep oh. talking. <laughs> Thank you for hanging with me there. I have just a couple more paragraphs. So the barn owners love their barns and artists love their barns and they love to paint them. So it was a perfect match. Uniting artists and barn owners was such a heartwarming and special part of this project. 
when the artists brought their paintings for viewing and the final jury process. Professional artists from Red Deer, Susan Walgar, selected the pieces. And the stories that the artists shared about their barns and their barn owners were so touching. Uh, Barbara Rivers' story stands out and uh, Shauna Olson's just many experiences in the Whittle barn with Kathy Falls going out to the, the barn and the connection they made with their barn owners was amazing. Um, I trust you will be, you will get a real sense of the passion for barns from the barn owner stories and from the, the depictions of the barns um, so lovingly craft, crafted and captured by the talented local artists. Our committee wants to ensure that we convey the importance of not only the barn to the rural farm life, but the importance of rural life to our culture here in Canada and specifically to Alberta. To Alberta. So thanks for hearing me out. That's appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you very much, Gwen. I'm going to share the um, the short video that, thank you for the clapping, Shauna. <laughs> She's using the reaction, I love it. Um, so I'm gonna share the short video uh, that the Old Institute um, did with us and uh, enjoy, it's, it's quite lovely. The idea came to me after I did the Write Art Project in Didsbury, um, joining writers and artists, and I thought um, it'd be so amazing to join up barns with artists. And it, that the project wouldn't be just about me painting barns, but I would involve other artists and different styles and different mediums to capture the, the barns of Mountain View County. That, it, that um, video is available on YouTube if anybody wants to. Oh, sorry. <laughs> there. It kept playing. Okay, are we good? We're back? Okay. Um, that video is on the Legacy Land Trust YouTube channel, so if anybody does want to share it, um, you're welcome to access it there. If you just go to YouTube and then um, look for Legacy Land Trust Society. Um, so our next item on the agenda, um, I believe we have a dignitary from the county here with, um, with Mr. Greg Harris. I'm just trying to find him. Can you unmute yourself, Greg? I can, and I oh, have. Oh, perfect. Excellent. Okay. You, you have some a chance to talk. All right. Well, um, I'm going to try the video. Oh, great. You have a but nice I barn. I don't have the best uh, inter internet, so, but that is the French barn just off the Acme Road. Beautiful. Neighbors. So, good evening, everyone, and thank you very much for the opportunity to uh, enjoy this event with you. You know, when Gwen and, and Dee and Lana and Ruth brought this idea forward to County Council about this unique way to capture and preserve an important part of the county's heritage, we were intrigued. Uh, as the details became more clear, we decided we had to support this very worthwhile project. Sadly, many of these barns are already gone, as Gwen said, and every year we probably lose a couple more. This book will see that these barns are preserved for posterity. But it's not just about the pictures. The stories behind each one is a treasure in itself. They'll help future generations to learn about the past, appreciate it, and I think some other generations to fondly remember the past. So, of course, we can't forget the artists. The book contains even more than pictures and stories. What it has is a view of these barns through the eye of the artist. And we get an opportunity to see how they've chosen to interpret that. 
I think that's great. That's the, the the unique twist to this book that I think will will catch so many people's attention. So, uh, Gwen, Paint the Barn Project has faced more than a few hurdles, but you've persevered, all of you, and the fruits of your combined efforts have come out in this beautiful book. So, uh, on behalf of Reeve, Beattie, and County Council, I want to offer you and your group our sincere thanks and our congratulations. Good luck. Thanks. Thanks, Greg. Really appreciate that. And I have to tell everybody that we went to, um, it was, I guess it was in February, we went to council for the last time and we presented. And before we were finished, Greg and one other counselor both said, well, how much will the book, book be? And I said, well, I, we're thinking $45. Like, it kind of interrupt us. We weren't quite finished. And they wanted to know when I said $45. They got up out of their seats, got their wallets out, brought cash around, and handed it to us at a presentation desk. <laughs> so I, I think they were a little enthusiastic. <laughs> so Greg yeah. was the first one to buy the very first book. So congratulations to you, Greg. Right. And thank you again for your your kindness and um, willingness to you know support us in the many ways you guys have. You're welcome. So um, we'll move along to, I don't I don't think Nathan Cooper, he was invited, but I don't think he's appeared anywhere in the boxes. <laughs> I've gone through them and haven't seen him, so oh, I'm okay. gonna that's guess fine. no. Yeah. Okay, that's this way. Um, and so then I wanted to do the presentations, like I'm gonna pretend I'm Oprah Winfrey. And if you're, if you're uh, present and I mention your name, anybody from Lawrence Masonary, um, Jesse and John or Dennis with us, if you'd like to unmute yourself and say hello. Nope. Okay. Um, and then Silver Willow. Well, you just seen Dawn behind my shoulder. <laughs> I'll give myself a book. Oh, thanks. Oh, whoa. can't show you the cover. Thanks for the book, Gwen. All right, next one. <laughs> We'll go on to uh, Heritage Barn, Deborah Rice Solomon. Are you with us, Deborah? Did she show up tonight? I haven't seen her either, no. Oh, that's too bad. Okay. Yeah. She must have forgot. She was so enthusiastic about it. So we'll, they'll get a free book. Um, the County of Mountain View, Jeff Holmes, are you there? Do you want to say hello? I seen him. I seen his name earlier. Or Al Kemry. You have to unmute and say hello. Guess they're too shy. <laughs> well, you get a book too. Here's your book. Hi, Gwen. I'm, oh, I'm on are. rural internet, so it's a little bit slow. <laughs> okay, thanks Jeff for joining with us tonight and all your support along the way. <laughs> And then um, Plains Midstream was another one. Uh, did anybody from Plains show up? I don't think so. I don't, I didn't hear anybody from Plains coming in. So Plains Midstream was another one. And then there was an anonymous um, donor as well that helped us raise um, some of our goal for, for our sponsorship. Um, and then I would like to thank those that were on our team. I call them our team. So uh, like I said earlier, Carly Marsh was... Um, at the beginning and helped us design our cover. It was Carly with us tonight, or I know our parents were on. I seen Murray and no, okay, no, I don't think so. We should have reminded her. <laughs> wow. Thank you. We're acknowledging her and let her know we did. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she got us going on quite a quite a good direction. So appreciated her help, and it was nice to work with her again. <laughs> and um, and then we have Curtis and Amy. Curtis uh, was our photographer extraordinaire and ex expert. So Curtis, if you can unmute and give us a wave and say hello. Hey, Gwen. Um, can you guys hear me? I just want to say congratulations to everybody. Um, there was a little bit of pressure to try and reproduce your guys' amazing artwork, all those different mediums to try and capture. Um, 
the amount of work that went in behind the scenes to do that was quite a bit, but uh, hopefully we captured everything faithfully and just honored to be part of this project. So thanks, Gwen and Dee. And again, congratulations, guys. Looking forward to seeing it. Great. Thanks, Curtis. Here's your, here's your free book. We'll Thank get you. It to you. <laughs> and to Amy, your wonderful assistant. She was great to work with too. Amy's also a local, she's from Carstairs originally. Um, so I'm not sure if she lives near here anyway. And, uh, and then Patty from uh, the Legacy Land Trust office. Is Patty with us? Do you think yet? I thought I saw her, but now I'm not sure. She's also on rural internet, so it might take a little bit for it to come in. Okay. Patty has um, been working behind the scenes trying to capture the, this, the job of keeping track of all the pre-sales, the sponsorship money, and all those things that, you know, a person, we have to have a really gold standard person in the background keeping, uh, keeping all that straight, and that is not me, and uh, I'm just really grateful we had someone like that, and she's going to be the one handing out the books now, which we are hoping, we were hoping that we could, um, we were hoping that we could give most of them out over this weekend. So now it's all on her shoulders at the legacy office. So um, for people to uh, come and pick them up there in old. So we really appreciate all that she's done. It's, she's been, and she's been so incredible to work with. I ask her a question and she's on it, you know, just so responsive. So anyways, I'll turn it over to Kim and Kim's gonna speak to um, about how they adopted us uh, as orphans into the Legacy Land Trust. <laughs> Well, as much as anything, I'm going to thank actually um, the committee for for uh, what came forward. So just for a little bit of background, Legacy Land Trust Society is a conservation focused charity based in Mountain View County. And um, we're dedicated to conserving environmentally, agriculturally and historically valued landscapes. Um, in particular, when Legacy was formed, there was a number of engagement outreach exercises. And one of the things that was really strong throughout the county was um, the importance of capturing local history and heritage. Um, and so the tools to conserve and the programs to conserve environmentally valued lands are very well established. Tools and programs to conserve agriculturally valued lands are starting to be um, more established and, and used, but the heritage or historical conservation tools and programs are still in their infancy. And um, it's something that uh, we're working on and we've got some great board members who are keen on this topic. So I think we're gonna see more. Um, Legacy's done stories projects where we've captured some of, some of these aspects. Um, but when Legacy um, was approached by Gwen in the committee um, about this project, it was a perfect opportunity to practice heritage conservation. And so while it's perhaps not the most common approach uh, of conservation by a land trust, it, uh, this project and the resulting book captures the human stories of agricultural settlement that are supported by and made possible by the land. And through all of the incredibly talented artists that are here today on the call and who worked in the um, book and the dedicated barn owners and storytellers, this project really does celebrate um, local history and culture. So we're really grateful to the committee for um, bringing this opportunity to Legacy to be able to, to participate in a project that supports that third stool of conservation in Mountain View County. And, um, uh, any of the funds that do get received through the project are going to go towards expanding the heritage conservation um, tools and programs so that we can do more um, to rep you know to represent how we got here at this place in, in the municipality and um, again we're just really grateful for the opportunity to work with all of you so thank you thanks Kim yeah legacy has been like we were looking for a home to belong to and we tried in several avenues and didn't fit anybody's criterias and I actually Kim and I just kind of bumped into each other at the beef and barley days or I think that's where it was Kim <laughs> and I said this is what we're doing but we we don't really belong anywhere and I remember her very word she said we'll take you <laughs> so and so we were adopted and uh, we had a home and man that that felt good that we had a belonging and they're a charitable they had charitable status 
So we got sponsorship money, they could give a tax receipt and that was really important. I didn't want to build another charitable status uh, process. That's a, that's a big job. So thanks, Kim. Um, and then the museums, I have Ruth was gonna, from our committee was gonna say a few words from the museum. Okay. When our committee started this project, we wanted to preserve the stories and the history of barns in Mountain View County. The museums within the county try to do the same thing. We try to preserve the history of our geographic area. So we were thrilled when at the organizational meeting, the decision was made that all museums within the county should receive a complimentary copy of the book. Our committee would also like to express our sincere thanks to the Carsters Heritage Centre. And I know our interim curator is on here for tonight, Tamara. You, I know I saw you there somewhere. Um, for offering us a central location to use our meeting, to hold our meetings, at least until COVID arrived. Again, thanks from the museums for thinking of us. Your book will be a lovely addition to our reference libraries. Thank you. Thanks, Ruth. Appreciate that. And yeah, they, they hosted us um, so so lovingly and so available made it so available to us. And we really appreciated having a, a physical home we could go to until, like she said, we went to Zoom. Until we went to Zoom, like the rest of the world. So um, then Lana was going to, and Ruth are going to talk about the the uh, barn owners, and I'll let you and there's how they gathered their stories or whatever, and I'll let you take that. Okay, it's me again. To all of the barn owners who shared their barns with us, thank you. Without your barns, the artists would not have had anything to paint, and we would not have produced this artist's treasure. You granted access to the artists to obtain what they needed to complete their paintings. And I understand that some deep friendships have been created between some of you. Lana and I were given the opportunity to write your barn stories for inclusion in the book. This was indeed a pleasure for us. You were most willing to share your stories and memories about your barns. Sometimes we were able to connect with more than one generation to a family. Sometimes we were fortunate enough to talk to the original builders. And the stories were not just about the buildings themselves. There were a lot of human interest stories, from barn dances, to marriage proposals, to the story of the three Whittle Bears, to fantastic dill pickles. It will make for interesting reading on a cold winter night. On behalf of Lana and myself, I wish to extend our sincere thanks for making our job easier. Enjoy the artwork and the history. And now I turn it over to Lana. Okay, hi. Uh, first, uh, before we begin, I, I would like to acknowledge that uh, this book is based on the place that we live, work and play, which is the traditional territories of the Blackfoot Confederacy, the Siksika, the Kainai, the Kani, the Tsutina, the Ayahe, Nakoda Nations, the Métis Nation, Region 3, and all people who make their homes in the Treaty 7 region of Southern Alberta. This book of Barnes is a brief history of a very modern time, less than 150 years, of this beautiful county. And, and the barn owners were spectacular fun. I, I have to say that, that when Ruth and I got to phone and talk to people, it was probably a highlight of our day. And uh, at least speaking for myself, and I know from what, I, from what Ruth was saying to me, uh, she was having the same experience. People just really loved their barns. And, and it's just such fun uh, hearing the stories and, and, and the pride that they have in these buildings. Uh, so I join Ruth in thanking all of you for making the project possible and a lot of fun. I also want to thank Gwen, who has been the force 
and the inspiration that helped this committee and the people we worked with to succeed in what, in hindsight, was a monumental project. Gwen speaks of stepping out in faith. For me, it was stepping out in confidence because when Gwen has a good idea, it will succeed. She is strong and kind, consults, doesn't lose sight of her goal, and is always fun to work with. At this point, it would be wonderful to have her in a room with all of you so you could applaud this woman of vision and give her the credit she deserves for not only conceiving this idea, but guiding it to fruition. The team was fun and steadfast. I have rarely had the pleasure of working with such a positive, hardworking group. I think Gwen sprinkled us all with fairy dust when we came together in these first days because we achieved a beautiful dream with her. Thanks, Gwen. And uh, I, I, I heard some kind of a rumor about a, an art show down the road. So we'll see you again. Well, I think we should just end it there because I, 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 my <laughs> cup is full and we don't have to do the awards. <laughs> no way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, Lana. That was uh, very, thank, very touching. Thank you. I couldn't have done it without you guys um, just sticking with me. Um, I can get pretty stubborn, I guess. Determined is a good point. Stubborn is the other side. <laughs> so, anyways, we stubbornly and determinedly get to the end. Um, so I'll let Dee um, say a thank you to the artist next, and then she'll introduce Susan Wolgar. Hi, everybody. So my first thing, of course, I agree with uh, Lana in thanking Gwen, too. Um, her uh, steadfast determination and uh, can-do attitude got us through this on some tough days. So thank you, Gwen. That was awesome. Um, so, and the rest of the committee too, I, I can't say that, uh, that I've worked with, uh, some, so many wonderful people to do a project that was, that means so much. So I just have to say thank you for that as well. So, um, so I'll get on with my little thing here, read what I have to say here. Mountain View County is truly blessed to have so many talented artists that reside and work here. When our call went out to ask for participation, I knew we wouldn't have to trouble finding artists to join in the project. So on behalf of the committee, I want to thank each of you for your significant effort to paint your barn red, brown, or white, or whatever color it was that we assigned you. We see your best effort, and I know how impressed our committee, the barn owners, and our community are with your work. I am proud to know all of you and have my own work published alongside of you. Well done, everyone, and congratulations to all of you. I want to also thank our jurors, Susan Wolgar and Don Candy from Red Deer. Our committee appreciated all of your careful considerations of each painting and your final choices for awards. Um, and I'll just tell you a little bit about our jurors. Uh, from Little Sister Pottery website, Dawn Candy is a visual artist living and working in Red Deer, Alberta. She earned her Bachelor of Arts degree from the University of Lethbridge, where she studied analytic philosophy and religious studies. She then went on to achieve her diploma in visual art from Red Deer College. Currently, she teaches several community art classes in addition to making her own work. Little Sister Pottery is her collection of ceramics inspired by pattern, rhythm, and landscape. And from Stephen Lowe Gallery website, Susan Woolgar was born in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan in 1955 and raised in Calgary upon, upon graduating from the Alberta College of Art in 1977. She had a diploma in applied arts with visual communications. Susan embarked on a career in visual communications, working and freelancing for various advertising firms in Calgary. She and her husband, Graham, married in 1974. They were transferred to Edson in 1982, and Susan found herself out of advertising and ready to take fine art seriously. Surrounded by an incredible 
incredibly beautiful and easily accessible natural environment, Susan began to explore landscape in painting. In 1989, and two children later, they returned to Calgary. Susan became active in the Alberta Society of Artists that same year. She worked with various galleries and began developing as both a teacher and as an artist. The family moved to Red Deer in 1996, where Susan continues to teach for Red Deer College, the City of Red Deer Cul Cultural Services, and various community art groups in various communities across Western Canada, instructing in watercolor, acrylic, pastel, and mixed media printmaking. Susan says she cannot remember a time when she didn't have a brush or pencil in her hand. The natural world has always been her inspiration as it supplies an abundant and endless source of material. She continues to work towards an artistic vision that is continually changing and growing. I've known Susan for 24 years and I can tell you from, the pers from personal experience that she is a respected mentor and instructor within the arts community in our province and beyond. Her art is admired and collected internationally, and we were so fortunate that she was willing to work with us on this project. Thank you, Susan. With that, I will let Susan share a little of her perspective on our project and the artwork included in our book. Well, Dee has probably more information about me than even I knew about me. <laughs> well, now that you know my backstory, um, when Dee phoned me about coming out to do this jury for the Barnes, it was like, okay. But when I got there, I was just like, holy cow, this is incredible. The quality of the work, there was some beautiful work in there. Just, I, I still have images that are in my mind. Um, the quality, the quantity of it, and the, as other people have iterated, the, the sense of um, the, the specialness of the relationship with the Barnes. And I had such a delightful day picking out the paintings. It was incredibly hard to choose a body of work. It always is hard. I've been on many, 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 many juries. And um, I always feel a little bit sad when I don't choose a painting, but there's only so many spaces in a book. So we whittled it down to, I think, a really beautiful body of work. Um, everything from four, four foot by four foot paintings to little tiny paintings, um, all of them lovingly done. And as Dee said, the variety of barns, I had no idea, not being a rural person per se, um, I was really, fascinated by the different styles. I learned quite a bit about Barnes that day, actually. It was kind of fun. So um, to all of you artists out there that are involved with this um, program tonight, uh, good, for, good on you. Like, it, it's amazing. And I'm really looking forward to having my book, not only because of the visuals, I also want to read the lovely stories that I'm sure that are following the, the images. Um, I did hear some of the backstories. And I know it's gonna be a great little bedtime story for my grandson when he comes over. So good for you guys. Thank you, Susan. I appreciate your time and effort that you did put into coming down and your expert, um, expert advice and choosing for us. We've been too hard for our committee. It, I mean, knowing so many of you artists and the work was so, <laughs> I got lots of help on my shoulder there. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. So my phone went off and that's okay. Um, and so it's okay. It's done then. Um, <laughs> I don't know what's going on behind me. Something about Facebook. Um, so we'll just turn this off. On Facebook. Um, and we're hoping to make this work so you can watch us present and do this whole. I don't know what to do, Don. Um, Sorry. So I don't know what to do. Sorry. <laughs> okay. It's okay. It doesn't. Yeah, it's not going to happen the rest of the way. If somebody else wants to try and use Facebook on their phone to catch the rest of it, you can go for that. I guess my phone is doing some funky things. So I'm stressing Dawn right out. Um, so anyways, we'll go on to doing the awards. So Kim, you have to give me the, the ability to be host again. And then I got a screen share again. 
And then during the time of announcing the winners, Kim's going to hold up. Um, Kim's going to hold up the uh, the ribbons because there's different color ribbons and different amounts of dollars. So you'll get your check when you pick up your book. So just for you that are getting Those awards and uh, and part of me and the ribbon and the ribbon heck and the ribbon and your book. So. Uh, look forward to that and just make sure you say that when you come to pick up your book and I'm just gonna find this slideshow again and get it ready sorry I have to screen share first apparently <laughs> um. Okay, you can see my messy desktop. There we go. <laughs> That's better. All right. So before I move to, uh, so I didn't get a time to do the award for um, the People's Choice Award, which I think everybody knows. And that's that one. And I didn't move the picture into there, but um, in time, but the People's Choice Award ended at four o'clock today. And that was, yes, our multicolor ribbon. And that was, um, the beautiful painting by the Honest Fox, and that was done by Elsie Archer. And it's I think if I talk, people. well, can people see the ribbon? It's very pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kim. And yep. she also gets with that award. Elsie, are you with us? I can let you say hello. Not sure if Elsie's on there. Pardon me, Don. Oh, she was on Facebook. Shoot. Um, it, so any of the other committee members getting Facebook up and going live again? Okay, thanks, Dee. So <laughs> congratulations again to Elsie. She was $75 check will come her way. And thanks for everybody that voted and participated. It was a very close race. Steve Wordall, fantastic piece as well. And it was just, just 10 points, I think, behind. And it was a close race. So uh, well done, both of you. And the next one will be um, the top vignette. And um, the committee uh, gave me the opportunity to choose the top vignette. So actually, <clears throat> the vignettes were small, were to be small subsidiary pictures within the book. And uh, we hadn't thought about giving an award to that. And then after Susan left, and, and then, um, so anyway, they allowed me to make this top choice. And the top vignette also goes to Elsie Archer. And it's a beautiful uh, scene and that's, uh, she gets this, <clears throat> the yellow ribbon and it's a barn scene uh, from Mountain View County along with a house, which is really quite cute. And um, we use that in the, in the book as well. And it's in the very front of the book actually. We'll, you'll see that Elsie when you open your book. So it's a beautiful piece. And she will get a um, hundred dollars for the top vignette. Next one is, doo -doo -doo -doo. next one is um, Pam Montgomery. Pam, can you unmute yourself? <laughs> and this is honorable mention and Pam's beautiful piece. Pam, are you there? I'm here, yes. Yeah. Hi, Pam. Congratulations. <laughs> and you get a green ribbon um, for, we have four honorable mentions. So uh, this beautiful piece with the lambs on it, uh, can you remind me of this barn? It's a Hanson barn, right? Yes, yep. Yeah, way to go, Pam. Thank you. Love this piece. And it's a done in acrylic, and I forget the size. What what size would that be? It is uh, 24 by 30, and it's oil. Oh, oil, okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah, again, one of those pieces that 24 by 30, it's quite a lovely size, and it's it's, when you see these in person, they're just so much more than just on the screen. So anyways, I just love this piece. Beautifully done. Okay, next one is Deb McIver, the Panko Barn. Deb, are you with us? No, no voice from Deb. So congratulations, yeah, Deb. Okay. 
congratulations awesome. oh, I'm so happy <laughs> I bet I just really pleased with that and again these are chosen by Susan and uh, Susan if there's any point you there's something you want to chime in but I just um, we're not looking at a critique here but I just really the Christmas of crispness of this winter scene is just gorgeous and I really commend you on that painting was it done in acrylic or oils acrylics nice very good one thing I, you don't get one thing you don't get from these images is the beautiful textures and the size of them and a lot of the nuances are missing as right. you know right yeah so and yeah you know that and we know that but the, the rest of the public, they'll have to get the chance to see that it's in person. It's just a gorgeous. There you go, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then um, the next one, for we had four honorable mentions. The next one is Elsie Archer, The Honest Box. This was the People's Choice Award. There you go. And another, um, yeah, gorgeous piece. And she's, uh, she's really captured this market garden in the front where, where they have their market garden running at the... And this is just a couple miles from my home, so it's a, a, one of my favorite barns to to visit. Well, well, so Elsie's not on, so I'm going to go to the next one. And the next one is the Ross Farm barn, and it is by Carol Sillis. Carol, are you with us tonight? I didn't see Carol's name anywhere, but Carol did this barn, I think, at least two times, if not three times. And uh, this is the one that Susan chose for the book. Some of the artists did them several times and, we, and they let Susan make the choice which one should go in the book. So she had a little pressure on <laughs> what to choose, but this is a, another really gorgeous. She really captured the, the cows and the, and the farm scene there. Life. Yeah, and the light. All right, the next one I'm going to announce is the Juror's <coughs> Third Choice Award. So third place, White Ribbon goes to Anne Birchall, The Boffy Barn. That's, that's the barn that, um, well, well, giving some away there. <laughs> that's the barn for third place. And uh, she gets $50 with this one. And yeah, really beautifully done watercolor. I don't think Anne is with us um, on here. I, uh, <laughs> there's Dawn appearing in my screen. <laughs> Actually, yes, I have a friend here. So thank you very yeah, much. Thank Congratulations you. to Elsie. I'm so happy for her. What yes. Work. Yes. Very good. Thanks, and Anne. Then, next, next was, um, yeah, we had very few watercolors. So this is uh, Elsie's and hers are, were both in place. So the next one is Kathy Falls. Are you on? Because you should unmute yourself. Second, second place juror's choice. Is the witch Hi, it's Kathy, and yes, I'm here. Thank you so you much. Are. Congratulations. <laughs> you get second place, Jerry's Choice, and the $75 check. So, oh, my goodness. Thank yeah. you so much. It was such an honor. Yeah, it's such a gorgeous barn. And I know you painted this one a number of times, too, didn't you? I did. <laughs> yeah, just wait. well done. Congratulations. I wish I could give you a hug. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. You're getting a hug. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yeah. Gorgeous colors of that one. And well, next one is the next one is first place, Juris Choice, Teresa Williams, The Bird Barn. Is Teresa Williams with us? Scroll down. Yeah. Da -da 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 -da. There we go. <laughs> no, don't see Teresa on. Dee, did you know if Teresa was on? Three, oh, I don't think she was coming. Okay, okay. Yeah, she said it was a really busy month. So this is um, a working barn a, the, called the Bird Barn, I believe. That's the birds. Yeah, yeah. The bird yeah. Barn. yeah. The bird. that's the juror's first choice. And so that brings us to the grand prize. And I'd like to recommend, <clears throat> it's hard not to give it away, but... <clears throat> I'd like to recommend Diane Anderson unmute. <laughs> Diane, I want to see your face. <laughs> Can you unmute and say hi? I seen her on earlier. Yeah, she was there. She was there. 
Okay, we go. I think we're unmuted. Can you hear? Yeah. There we can go. You. Wow. Yes. Can you, you can hear us? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And now, can you see me okay? Even I though can. I'm sharing? Yeah. All right. Upside down. <laughs> there we go. There oh, wow. is the cover. Congratulations. <laughs> Diane, can you see it without the shine on there? Yeah, I can yeah. see it. That's amazing. <laughs> and she gets I a gold ribbon. She gets a gold ribbon and a brand new Ford truck. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, $100. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you. Yay. Yay to all of you. <laughs> Work so hard. And you know, the um the choice for this, we get the committee gave her Susan two things. We said it needs to be an iconic barn and it needs to have within it part of the history of that kind of capturing somehow the history. And this mm -hmm. is the barn that she chose mm -hmm. with those two. That's the only criteria we gave her. I don't think as a committee, we could have chose one as the cover. It, there were so many that I, you know, I've looked at these barns with organizing this book so many times and I don't think there's a way I could have chosen the, the single one for the cover. Mm -hmm. So we thank you, Susan, for taking that pressure off of us. And it's a gorgeous yes. cover and it, it's a gorgeous, uh, and it's been a long time keeping that secret. <laughs> No kidding. All this time. A hint. Yes. <laughs> so, and well done to everybody that um, that that didn't get an award. Your award. I know most of you have sold your paintings, and your awards were um, your efforts to put into this book. And uh, for like for me, it it wasn't about receiving the award, but being part of the this project. And I know all of you feel this the same way. So thank you for participating with that. And I. Um, just going to wrap up with a few things. Now I can get rid of this screen share and how do we do that, uh, Kim? I have to make just you go up to the top. Just yeah, go up to the top and cancel share. Oh, stop share. There stop we go. Share. Yeah. Okay. There we go. There. Okay. And all right. So I just finish up with a few things here. Um, um, the artists, barn owners, team members, sponsors, and pre-book purchasers can pick up their books starting Monday at the Lakeview Land Trust office in Old, the Old White Heritage Building um, on the corner of 4801 49th Avenue. And she's going to be open from 8.30 till noon. She takes an hour break for lunch and from 1 to 3.30. Anytime in there starting Monday, but going forward Monday to Friday. So don't all rush in there Monday. <laughs> I'll be there Monday. Um, uh, to help out just to make sure we get through the first day. We're still exploring ideas and hope and dream about having an art show in the future where we can actually showcase these beautiful pieces and all the extra ones that people did. And, you know, lots of you did extra um, paintings that we asked you to do of Mountain View County Barns. And so I know there's more out there. I've done three myself. And so still like to dream about that. Maybe it's going to be next mm -hmm. summer. Maybe we even have to do it outdoors, <laughs> who knows? But um, as COVID provides uh, space, we will, to do it safely, we will. And um, so you'll hear more from us. And any available books after tomorrow will be $50 and you can still buy them on Paint the Barn Red site and, um, uh, and still pick them up at the Legacy Land Trust. And once we're done all this, then the museums will, once we're paid off, which is only about a hundred books away, from being able to pay off our loan and um, we'll celebrate that too. And then we can um, give the books to museums and uh, they will sell them from the museums and they will keep, and the Legacy Land Trust and they will keep the profit. So it has been all um, a voluntary process and all for the benefit of the community. So I, we were thought we would just unmute everybody, not unmute everybody, but um, sorry, allow people to share in the, for the next 15 minutes if you have something you want to say or a question. Um, so just raise your hand or put that thumbs up reaction sign like this. And um, then we all know you want to speak and we'll unmute you. So just to control so no, everybody's not talking over everybody. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Cassie Fox, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. 
Personally, I just wanted to thank the committee for all the work that they've done. It's a wonderful project to be involved with. It's been a really wonderful evening tonight and just wanted to thank everybody that's been involved. I wanna congratulate Diane, I think, and admire her art all the time. So congratulations on being on the book cover and uh, just thank you for being, um, allowing me to be part of the project. So anyway, thanks. It's okay. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Kathy. Yeah. Thank you everyone for um, making me part of this, this wonderful experience. I so enjoyed spending time with the group and I loved all the artwork and I know that my book's gonna be beautiful and I hope somebody has signed it for me. It better be signed. <laughs> That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Signing. I want it autographed. Anyway, thanks. Thanks guys. That's been lovely. Oh, I can't wait to see it. It's so good. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Susan. So no, no questions. <laughs> Congratulations to all the winners. Yes, everybody. And you know what? It's an honor to be a part of a project like this. I can't thank everybody enough. And I would do it again in a heartbeat. <laughs> nice. And thank you, Diane. And your um, keeping keeping this under wraps for six months has been a real big secret to hold on to. Just saying, <laughs> I had to email her and say, "You better be on tonight." <laughs> <laughs> I thought I can't give it away, but I have to tell her she better be on. <laughs> yeah, well, ended up at home, so that's good. That's good. I'm glad I'm here with her. <laughs> Yay! Thanks, Gail. Your support. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Well, does anybody else have any questions or suggestions? I mean, uh, I was I was curious the other day is thinking about how many, I think most people have sold their paintings to their barn owners, but uh, we were thinking if those that weren't sold, if we wanted to use our website, the Paint the Barn Red website to put them up for sale and mm. post them on there and, and then they could directly, I don't know, Kim, we were talking about them linking directly to the artist or weren't sure how to do that but you know that was another way we'd like to we really want to be able to promote the artists and the more opportunities for them to sell so d, d well, had sure. a suggestion for a platform also so maybe if people are interested in doing that send a note to someone on the committee whoever and we can pull it together and then um, figure out how to how to make it happen okay. for sure i would be interested for sure okay Okay. Great. I'd like to say thank you to the committee as well. And I know you guys are probably just could hardly wait for this day to launch this <laughs> amazing book. Uh, um, in the future, if we could have some kind of art show with real life paintings, I don't, I don't know if any, anyone agrees with this, but it's no hurry. Like we can wait uh, a year from now. Um, it would be nice to see them all in real life. And um, I wrote this in the chat, but I just wanted to thank you very much. And I know this was an incredible amount of work that I can't probably can't even grasp, but thank you very much. Okay. Uh, can I speak? This is Lana. Yeah, I, I was just going to say if people do have lovely ideas like that, uh, the, the uh, email uh, address is still open. I, I'm still monitoring it. So if you want to write in, uh, I can get anything uh, to the rest of the committee. And, and yeah, it would be really nice to have a show sometime. Or as Murray said, a, a, a book signing at least. <laughs> Just mm -hmm. so that would people, be really nice. Could bring in their books and, and people could mm -hmm. come in and sign. That so, would be awesome. Anyway. And thanks to all those artists who came and helped us with the different art shows. Uh, it, was, it was just great because some of the art shows were, were uh, pretty, pretty spectacular. We had some big ones, so mm -hmm. it was nice at, at the Red Barn. Well, thank you. Yeah, and we're, 
we're, um, you know, somebody suggested even at the year anniversary um, that perhaps we could, um, you know, we'll be free of this other thing going on and be able to actually have a, people can bring their book back. And most of the paintings that they have sold, they're usually within the county anyway, so they're not going to be too far and wide, hopefully. Mm -hmm. I know, Pam, you sold one to Vancouver, I think, but <laughs> your nocturnal, didn't it go to Vancouver? Anyway, it's, it, we'll be able to gather most of them back in and and uh, they're not too far and wide. So that was, um, that's always a hope. And, and I just want to say too, we worked really hard to get the details absolutely as correct as we could. We had five sets of eyes on it, but um, you know, there, there may be some mistakes within there and, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll uh, accept the, and accept our apology now. <laughs> and our push for a deadline was, was uh, quite a driver and it, uh, it uh, we did our best. That's all I have it's to say. All about. being human, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. we did our best. And man, like I say, if learning curve, sometimes you don't know what how deep the puddle is that you stepped into. And and uh, just glad we we have that done. And and was so excited when the books came. So they each are also wrapped in. They're going to make a nice gift. Whoops! I can take that sticker for Silver Willow off. Um, they each mm -hmm. are wrapped in plastic. So sir. Yeah you know, saran wrapped and they're really yeah. going to make nice to be able to give and they're to protect the cover and everything before as people handle them, right? Until you give them to people so or um, mail them. So they'll be nicely protected. And we have a, the codes on the back and whatever that thing is again. I don't know. That's the <laughs> thing. And then, <laughs> then there's a library code on the back and we have, we had to register that with the Canadian libraries. And so it's all official and um, we'll be in the local library as well so anyways we probably can wrap this up i i don't want to cut anybody off but the time is going and we've really been oh only quarter after eight that's not too bad so appreciate appreciate everybody deborah do you want to say something yes i i was really liked working on this project and thank you guys so much you're welcome thanks debbie <laughs> it's Good been great to have you here. I, Thank I you guys for just, all that you've done. Oh. It's very, it was very special to me. You're welcome. Mm. I love seeing the barn owners here tonight because I, like I say, I worked a lot with the artists and I knew a lot of you before, but I know more artists now than ever before. And <laughs> I, um, yeah, I'm very impressed with the, the co collaboration and the community that we've created. So, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Okay. Well, we'll sign off. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, everybody. Keep Stay you safe. Good night. Good night. Congratulations. Bye, everyone. Yeah.